the strength of microfinance lies in its feet on street model which is unique to microfinance a day in the life of a field executive in an mfi begins early in the morning he heads out to center meetings where women come to either access fresh loans or pay installments on existing ones this leaves them the rest of the day to engage with their daily income generating activity what microfinance does which um, banks even when they work with uh, the bottom of the pyramid as it were uh, the banks do not do is provide them service at the doorstep uh, in a flexible way need based whenever they need whatever amount they need smaller amount gradually moving up building up and whatever so that relationship um, that you build um, banking system is just not you know tuned to uh, provide that that kind of a service bank ke shobai sorasori je kotha bolte parben onek kichu niyom kanun jane na oneke porashona jane na shei khetre amader sekane jete oshubidha hobe ekhane dekhlam amar i card adar card ekta tip shoy dile peye jacche kichu kai to paisa nahi milta tha agar kisi marwadi ke paas bhi gaye to bhi sona rakhte to bhi wo log sona test karte the कि ये सही है असली है क्या नकली है करके तो उनके पास भी जल्दी नहीं मिलता था कोई फाइनेंस में जाओ तो वहाँ पे भी नहीं मिलता था तो अभी फिल वक्त क्या है कि जब से हम ऐसा माइक्रो फाइनेंस जब से आया तब से इजी हो गया लाइफ आराम से पैसा मिल जाता है ऑल्टरनेटिव दैट पीपल पीपल है वॉज द मनी लैंडर कॉस्ट वे वेरी हाई मोर देन द कॉस्ट इट वॉज ऑल्सो virtually had to trade your dignity finance jaate ne to kisi ke paas mein puchte to kisi ke paas puchte to kisi ke ghar pe to wo bolte the aapke paas mein kuch bhi nahi hai ghar nahi hai khet nahi hai matlab aapke paas mein koi property nahi hai to hum kaise aapko paisa de kiske zimmedari pe paisa de aisa puchte it existed from time uh, um, from time immemorial uh, the really defining uh, parameters i would say was the uh, i would say the prevalence of ngos in the sector pretty much in the 70s and the 80s 90s saw a bit more focus in terms of more organizations coming uh, the really uh, underpenetrated regions being actually active in terms of these uh, activity but i personally feel that if you are an ngo it's very difficult to scale up you are always depending on the grants okay of various agencies and all and if the grants you know flow dry up then you will not be able to again go back to your borrowers and give them money that period i would really say from 95 mid of 95 to uh, 2005 saw the emergence a lot of transformation of these older entities into proper non banking financial companies so what ended up happening was people started getting highly indebted because there was no understanding of the credit mechanism there was no understanding of what over indebtedness meant there was no understanding that if you're giving me money i need to pay you back at a certain point all that people understood was there four guys coming to give me money yeah that's brilliant now i will take from all four of them but without a sense of you know what is the income that i get or i will generate and can i then service all these loans and that's what i think led to the over indebtedness crisis and the whole fallout that happened in the south around 2009 which actually set back the microfinance industry quite severely so i would say 2000 uh... 11 second half onwards whatever has happened in the sector uh, i would really count them uh, in about three four key points one of them i would say is the emergence of the credit bureau discipline so a lot of us who had started work prior to the crisis uh, consolidated our activities and uh, played a key role in terms of setting up uh, highmark which was the first credit bureau so mr vijay mahajan who heads basics it was his brainchild to set up and institution so that we could form a network of all these mfis and then that network would lead in terms of addressing the concerns the issues and the voice of the several mfis rather than then independently going and addressing them with a reserve bank so since mfin was already in position and had been set up voluntarily as a self regulating organization of sorts you know our basic structure was on along those format uh, along those lines so the reserve bank in june 2014 made us an sro so today we have the twin job of one of course the policy advocacy part of it where you then go and you know uh, talk to government talk to the regulator regarding issues 
that affect the sector, ways of doing business, ease of doing business, etc. But on the other hand, on behalf of the uh, Reserve Bank, you do a supervisory due diligence and oversight of the sector as well. There are several, you know, instances in terms of RBI regulation, in terms of RBI permission on SRO, permission on several other fronts, which gives us a feeling that as policy policyholders have accepted microfinance, is doing a very good last mile connectivity. And to that extent, they are encouraging. And one proof is the granting of small finance bank license and full, filing, full bank license to Bandha. Uh, five years ago, there were no credit bureaus covering microfinance customers. Today, not only is everybody from MFI is covered, but also now self-help group members, which is a big hole, that is going to be covered. Uh, then the, uh, you know, the misreporting and the various type A and B errors and identification uh, prior to all, that is going to come down considerably because of Aadhaar linking use of computers is now universal. So, there's a lot of uh, progress, uh, you know, from the time we started. थोड़ा बहुत पैसा घर खर्च के लिए किया और इसके बाद में हफ्ते पे यहाँ पैसा भरते गए जब चाहे हमको पैसा मिलता है यहाँ पर इसके लिए हमको बहुत आसानी होती है इसके लिए। We started investing in better technology, technology for the future, where we have first gone paperless. That was the first objective because the loan officer's job is to deal with paper, to deal with cash and deal with facts and data and information. So we said, let's take the paper out of the way. So we were the first company to give them tablets in which they do all the work when they are interacting with the clients. We hope to take it for what the future lies in going cashless. And so apart from the loan that we give to the customer, which is the first relationship, we also want to help the customer open a bank account. We would like her to uh, save for her future. So we offer pension schemes from the government, uh, which she can subscribe to in very easy monthly installments. Uh, we offer insurance protection, both for on the life and the non-life side. Normally, women do not have a large say in the decision-making process at the household level in terms of consumption, in terms of what is to be bought, in terms of who is to be educated. The fact that now they have access to this income, I mean to this money, this credit, gives them a certain voice. If you go by the studies that entrepreneurship is never developed by simply training, Every entrepreneur that has developed in entrepreneurship that has been developed in India, it was by their own effort, people have become entrepreneurs. Okay, so microfinance industry is helping them in developing the entrepreneurship in the, in the poor populace, where they, like they have the will and we are showing them the way how to go about it. See, now you have what is called uh, a graduating process. You know, you can start as an NGO or a Section 25 company do kind of unregulated microfinance as long as they're not doing deposits. And then you reach a certain stage, a couple of crores, and then you have to become an NBFC MFI. And then you can steadily grow maybe 200, 200 crores. And that's the time you apply for a, a small finance bank license. Since there are now differentiated banks in the game which were not there earlier, of which we have no models anywhere else in the world, it will be an interesting time to see in the next three or five years how all of this comes together and moves forward in terms of reinventing, reorganizing and also looking at populations differently and segments differently in the way they give and take 
uh, access to financial services. So it's a fascinating story in that sense. It's an industry which uh, virtually everybody had written off in 2010-11, uh, but as we as uh, the years passed by, 2013-14, we thought we we found that that assets books again grew. The industry as a whole, I think, as we talk today, um, has become more matured. Uh, they have appreciated uh, the real concerns of people, and they followed uh, the people. They followed the right kind of uh, remedial measures and all. And it's a remarkable resurrection story.